Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Chip Baker coming to you with another episode of the Success Chronicles. And today we are here with my guy, Mr. Byron Jamar Terry, a.k.a. BJT, <laughs> coming to us from Georgia. Uh, an amazing uh, young guy. Has uh, won st- two state championships, uh, exceptional athlete, and uh, just excited to have him on this episode of the Success Chronicles. So first off, thanks so much. Of course. Thank you, All right. Well, let's dive into it, man. If you don't mind, uh, you know, sharing your life story. I know we talked a little bit about it off air, but if you don't mind sharing that with the audience. Well, um, I'm 20 years old. Um, I started playing football when I was seven. Um, I grew up. Oh, uh, it's kind of really hard to sort of articulate all this because I really wrote it into a story. Mm-hmm. But um, really, I was just a really happy-go-lucky kid. Um, I had my fair share of struggles and certain experiences that I had to overcome, but ultimately I overcame them. So, you know, just really growing up, I loved sports. I was just infatuated with football. I had an obsession from five years old to six years old, seven and on. Yeah. And even as a kid, I used to write playbooks. <laughs> I used to all the plays that I made with my friends and then, and just everything else. So, really... I was just so obsessed with football. I watched college football and just watch how they do things. I want to do the same things. And NFL, I wanted to dress like them, be like them. I remember um, but Danny and Tomlinson, he had a tenant visor. So I wanted a tenant visor. So I actually took my visor and I actually colored it with a Sharpie. <laughs> so I couldn't see. I couldn't really see out of it. And I didn't really wear it, but I thought it was, I thought it was cool because he had one. So I wanted one. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw Ricky Wayne wearing green gloves, and I had to get gray gloves, and I colored them with the green pins because I wanted to be like him. And I was a, I'm a really big Florida fan. So growing up, I'm one of the Florida Gators are my favorite team, basically. And I saw Tim Tebow wearing these like wrist coaches with plays in them, so I had one too. And so just because I really like that, just really all aspects of the game. And growing up, Peyton Manning is my favorite all-time player. So. He, the reason why he's so obsessed with the game, that's part of the reason why I'm so obsessed with the game and how he kind of goes about it, just watching film and just studying the game, yeah. things like that. So I was kind of like on the same thing. So that's oh. really the sport aspect. But um, uh, middle school was, was okay. It was okay. Just playing football, middle school and stuff like that. Um, I remember I was in seventh grade, seventh grade playing football for my uh, middle school team. And um, really, middle school, it was kind of hard at times, really, just because I couldn't really keep up so much with all the latest trends and all that, like the newest clothes and shoes and music and all that. I really was just focused on school and football most of the time, so it really wasn't my priority, you know? So that was that. And then eighth grade, um, trying out for the middle school team again, I kind of got hurt, so I couldn't really do much, so I ended up getting cut from that team. And then I ended up transferring schools. And the reason why I transferred to the school that I eventually went to was because my cousin was going there. And I thought, well, I kind of want to be around my cousin. So I was like, you know, why not? So did that. High school was pretty well. I dealt with some things in high school, just really middle school as well, but more on the mental health side. Um, just, hey, you know, having uh, depression and just going through, like, other mental health issues, like anxiety and whatnot, and just trying to navigate through that and using football as a way to do it. Yeah. But also football, football was kind of like one of the, I guess, attributes or the things contributing to me being, I guess, sad and anxious and whatnot. Mm. So I was just kind of, I felt like I was kind of stuck in the middle of it being like, well, football is sort of an outlet, but a part of this is the reason why I do feel the way I feel, you know, at times. And so, I mean, it's been really kind of hard to deal with that. I know I've, I've written about it and such, so people want to, Read about that, they can. But um, I don't know. It would be, be sometimes where I would just isolate myself and just whether it be on the field, off the field. It could be I could be on the field and people would be over here talking about whatever they're talking about. I guess during a, a break or something, and I would be off to myself at times. But it wasn't always like that. I'm a really team oriented guy, so I'm a really I'm a team first person. Whether it be on a sports team or academic team or anything like that, I'm a team first person. So um, really. I just wanted to be there for my teammates any way I could, just, I guess, giving them something for a game if they need some extra socks or 
some gloves or like a shirt or something if it's cold or whatever, something like that, or just really helping them off the field and trying to keep them, I guess, on a, on a good path and just doing the right things and making sure their priorities in order along with mine and just um, really just being able to help in any way I can. So that's kind of the sports side of it. So I really enjoy that. And really with sports, I love doing football camps, you know, with the youth or even people my age, even these people older. So, I mean, I just really just enjoy that. Just sports helping other people and just I want to be a leader, whether it be in sports or coaching or even in the classroom, really trying to encourage my classmates to do well. They're nervous for a test. They're anxious for an assignment or presentation. I'll just kind of tell them, like, you know, you'll do good. You got it. You know, just prepare well and you'll be fine. So that's on the fourth thought of the um, All right. Past, divorce and all, this, all of that. No, go ahead, go ahead. I'm saying that's that's good stuff, man. To be involved in all of that and be uh, blessed and fortunate to to be able to achieve some of those things. But I think you know a couple of underlying factors that I that I picked up uh, from you telling that story. I, I think you're kind of destined to be a coach, man. <laughs> but but then uh, the other thing is, you know, how you talked about you like uh, giving and helping people, and it's it's nothing better than and more fulfilling. Than being able to to help others, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Well, uh, well, what are what are three things that you've accomplished in your life that you're proud of? Oh, three things I've accomplished in my life that I'm proud of. Well, uh, one of them I haven't really done yet. Um, I guess. Things I'm proud of. I guess really just being able to help others. And I guess just learn, just really just to mature as a person. I felt like I was always like kind of mature for my age, but really just growing up and just being better as a person. Because I'm, I'm really big on personality. Like, I mean, to me, a lot of the people I, I look up to, especially in the sports world, I can see that they're, they're really good players and all that. But if they're not like a really good person too, and like nice and kind of people, then I might not gravitate towards them as much. Right. So I guess really that and just um, being an amazing person and just really being able to inspire others. And one thing I thought of is winning a championship, whether it's coaching a team or helping coach a team, winning a championship, going undefeated, and while being a college student as well. So after games, I would go home and study and do homework and get up and have class and things like that or possibly have class at the end of the day. But just like things like that. But one thing I do want to do is to create my own charitable organization or um, foundation. Right. So I had that idea since I was like eight years old, but I didn't really harp on that until I was a freshman in high school. It's really like the story of it was, it was, I think, November 22nd, 2007. I went to a Falcons game at the Georgia Dome, the old Georgia Dome, and they were playing the Colts, so I obviously wanted to be famous. Like, so... We were going and um, we saw this, like, me and my mom saw this uh, homeless man on just like there. And I was just like, you know, I wanted to help him. So I kind of told her to turn the car around and um, I gave him some, like, money or something. And then ever since then, I kind of just wanted to uh, help other people. So when I was a freshman in high school, I saw certain athletes like um, Joel Revis or Joe Hayden. They had their own little charitable organizations as yep. well, I believe. So yep. I was like, I want one. I want one too. So I've been kind of working towards um, having that as well. But I've been trying to figure out what this can really be about, whether it be about homelessness or athletes in mental health or helping athletes just in general or people in general. So I'm trying to figure out how I want to go about that. So, yeah. Good stuff, man. Good, good stuff. Well, I would consider, you know, the things that you've been blessed to achieve, some successes, huge successes, what is your definition of success? My definition of success. Um, whew, my definition of success. That's a tough one because people look at success kind of differently. Um, whether you have a lot of accolades in something or whether you do well with something and you're able to help others with it, I'd probably say my definition of success is being able to really enjoy what you do as well as having the accolades with it and the numbers and the statistics 
but also inspiring others through what you do in the process. I would say that's what success is. It's anyway. good. I like it, man. It's good stuff. Well, again, man, I want to say thank you so much for taking the time uh, to interview with the Success Chronicles, if you don't mind sharing with the audience. And you said you've written about your story? Yes, I, uh, read, I wrote a story. It was titled, it's titled Bounce Back, and it is on my Medium account. That's where I, that's where I write and things like that. So on, on my social media as well, but my Medium account, is just my name, inspiring Jamar Terry. And if you go on my social medias, you can find those stories as well. So my Twitter is at BJT underscore era, and my Instagram is at BJT underscore era. So that's where you can find the stories. But really, um, writing, I feel like I was always kind of good at English in a way, except for ninth grade, because ninth grade English was kind of a struggle for everybody. Yeah. Okay. But um, there a lot of people in my class were struggling with ninth, with ninth grade English, but looking back on it, it was kind of helpful in a way. But, um, so, um, I saw Tyron Matthew did this piece with the Players Tribune about his time in Arizona and his draft process and things like that. And I was reading it and I was just like, you know what, I kind of want to, I want to write something too. So I might not be, I guess, prominent to be able to do something with Players Tribune, or uh, even was at the time. So I thought I was just like, I'll write it and have somebody look at it and help me edit it. And, you know, so I was like, you know what, I want to use this to inspire people, try to help people, just tell my story and kind of format it in sort of the same way. So I started doing that. But my first story that I wrote wasn't the first story I was written on me. So the first one was I did one with the Subway alum, and they do, like, recruiting and things like that. They talk about that on social media and whatnot. Uh-huh. And so I was talking to the person, I was telling them, and I was like, hey, we can talk about mental health, things I've been through, because it'll inspire other people, and it can help other people. And no, we thought, no, it was a good idea. So... We talked about football and just sports and things like that, and they asked me questions about it. And it's and it's titled um, "Bias Monetary, the high school football player deals with uh, depression as a or Bias Monetary deals with depression as a high school football player." And the thing is, I was really proud of that story because it wasn't, I guess, a whole story, but it was like a little something about recruiting or the sports in general and things like that. And then it kind of dives into, I guess, a personal interview that talks about things like that. But I was really proud of it because um, I knew it to help other people and I did that when I was 17 years old. So before that, I hadn't really seen too many high school athletes or really just 16, 17 year old people in general yeah. talk about things like that. So I'm really glad of the work it did and the, I guess the statistics that came along with it and I'm just really glad that it helped. So I wanted to sort of reiterate on that and then write another piece about that with you more in depth with it. So I did that and um, I just kind of kept writing after that. I kind of enjoyed it. I wasn't really, I'm not an English major or anything like that, but I feel like I'm a pretty, I wouldn't say I'm a great writer right now, but I'd say I'm a pretty talented writer because I still need some work. But I feel like every piece I've written, it just keeps kind of getting better and just um, keeps progressing. Yeah, just like anything, just like in sports, reps make us better, you know? Exactly. And so the more we exactly. can get practice, the more we can get reps, the better we get at it, man. I think it's awesome what you're doing, and I, I wish you continued success. Uh-huh. Of course. All right. Well, thank, thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you, and thank you guys for checking out this episode. We'll see you next time. God bless. Yes, sir.